two inflatable solar camping lights. Now, I don't really go camping, so I can't tell you how good these are or not. If you have thoughts on these, you can leave a comment in the, the comment area below. But the idea is that you've got a solar panel <coughs> with LEDs in the back of it. And if you inflate this, and it's got two little handles here, which is partly for hang, but I'm guessing that if you squeeze this and pull, it should kind of self-inflate. And you could then top it up by blowing into it. One moment, please, while I blow into it. This is the unhygienic bit when it gets sort of, like, damp inside. Okay, so now we've got... It's gone, well, we've got, it's gone from being that flat pack arrangement to being a sort of freestanding little light. You know, it's not a bad idea, and it's got this diffused plastic. And when you push the button, it go, comes on at low, and then higher, and then it's got a flashing mode. And I can see that's going to be quite useful. It does act as a fairly good diffuser, and the larger the diffuser, the better, I suppose, because it is a very soft diffusion. What about the other one? The immediate similarity is the fact it's got the same LED panel and the same modes. What happens if you push the button and hold it? Does it go into some sort of SOS mode or anything like that? No, it doesn't. Nope, it's not got another mode. Um, but the other difference here is that this is clear. I'm not sure if there's an advantage to that. Let's uh, inflate it. Oh, it's actually not as big as I thought it was going to be. Right, let's try and inflate that by ear. Quite tricky to get, get, get access to. Right, well that's it full of condensation now. So, uh, I suppose ultimately, if you carry a pump, would you carry a pump with you if you were camping? For the sort of air mattress and stuff like that? I suppose if you were travelling with a vehicle. Uh, I'm not sure what the advantage is. I think I prefer this one because it is diffused and actually more compact. This one kind of would better just with the bare disc on its own because the, all the clear stuff does is uh, offer us it, it offers a sort of it lets you stand on something um, and act as a sort of just a sort of splash light source around that. I think I prefer this one from that aspect. Uh, let's take a look at the panel inside. I'm just, uh, if you notice me pausing and going humming and hawing, it's because I'm slightly getting my head around where these would be actually any more useful than just a standard camping light or solar one. But anyway, let's uh, open this one up. And get the module out of it and take a look inside the module. Hmm, easier said than done. So let's try and nibble around the outside of this. Is that going to get me in? Um, yes. Right, okay. There's a sort of white layer on this, which uh, is just obviously to make it look pretty. So let's uh, get that off. Does the module come out? Yes, it does. Oh, it's lithium. I suppose ultimately it is so flat that it would be. Uh, does this come out? No, it doesn't. It appears to have a sort of cardboard frame here. And the reflector, I'm guessing it's glued and it's a vacuum floor formed reflector. And then the actual lithium cell is stuck to both those. Right, okay, let's see if I can get this off in a non-destructive manner. Quite a generous sized lithium cell. Uh, 900 milliamp power, that's quite decent. Everything is integrated onto this. Uh, how about that little switch? Is it just soldered onto the back? I'm guessing it is. Fortunately, the tape is actually liberating the lithium cell quite well. So the switch is just sat across the back there with a double-sided tape over it. And look at all these connections. Are they test points, I wonder? I think it's designed to take the battery contacts uh, from two directions, uh, depending on the type of battery. Uh, the solar panels connections... 
One comes across here with the diode. The other one uh, is just really heading to the chip here. I don't see any protection circuitry in the chip, so I'm guessing... Oh, I've just snapped the battery off. Okay, that's all right. I'm guessing that the protection is all combined into this. It's a universal chip that does the over-voltage protection as well. If there is over-voltage protection... Uh, I wonder what uh, voltage is on that battery at the moment. If it's uh, already quite a well-charged battery, it wouldn't take too long to top it up. But having said that, this just arrived. I've not had it out in sunshine, so uh, I don't know what sort of voltage is going to be in it. It's about 3.9, which is actually fairly high. OK, the temptation is to fake the solar panel and actually connect this to a bench supply and see if it does cut off the current when the thing's charged. OK, one moment, please. I'm just going to do that right now. Right. Interesting circuit, but slightly flawed. You see, the lithium cell does not have protection. And the solar panel, which has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, it's got 10 sections of the silicon, uh, which will put out around about 5 volts, typically up to about 6 volts in bright sunlight, at between 50 to 100 milliamps. 50 in ambient lighting conditions, probably about 100 milliamps in bright sun. And unfortunately, the only thing that's between that and the lithium cell is a diode, and the diode's going to drop, well, I measured it, it drops about 0.4 volts when it was charging, so pre presumably a Schottky diode. Uh, the chip is completely separate from the cell here. Effectively, the cell has no protection. It, if it had been the type with the little build, built-in circuit board, then it would have been fine. But as it is, it can be grossly overcharged. And when you overcharge a lithium cell, uh, the lithium cell internally has the foil, and a coating, and then it's got the other foil and the coating and the other electrode, and the separator. And normally the lithium ions are sort of diffused and spread out, and as you charge it, they get diffused from one side and into the coating on the other side. However, if you overcharge a cell, the lithium ions get pushed further and further towards the uh, negative electrode, and that results in a concentration of lithium at that point. I mean, it's not a huge quantity of lithium, but it can then start causing damage to the, the rest of the chemistry, and it shortens, at the very least, it shortens a life. If it uh, goes too far, if you really extremely overcharge cells, they can actually go volatile and then develop hot spots and reactions, and that's where they get the reputation for bursting into flames when they get overcharged. <laughs> This one is also stuck with a fairly thin tape onto the back of the circuit board. And these solar uh, cells out in bright sunlight, they're going to absorb a lot of heat. So if you left this out all day long in really scorching sunshine, there's a risk that that would be damaged at that point. It would potentially cause the cell to puff up internally. And also it could, uh, well, the, it could, could cause enough concentration of the lithium that it damaged the cell and it would never ever really take a proper charge again. Not good since that's the only way to charge it. But beyond that, I mean, th I was thinking they could have put a Zener diode across that. Because um, if you charge a lithium cell up to just about the military spec, about 3.9 volts instead of 4.2 volts, it still holds about 80% per of its capacity, and that's tons for this application. But um, although you're losing 20% of the capacity, it results in a much longer battery life. The lithium cell will last an awful lot longer in terms of the storage lifespan and the uh, the number of charge cycles. It will increase the charge uh, capacity greatly in the sense of that you can charge it instead of a thousand times, you could charge it like five thousand times instead. However, beyond that huge flaw that kind of spoils this product, we have the flasher chip. Well, I say flasher chip, it looks like a chip that's been designed for the sort of bicycle lights that stroll backwards and forwards. It's got a typical arrangement. It's actually got five outputs. That's what uh, I was looking at all those test points earlier. earlier. They're, they're the test pins, the LEDs. And to allow it to drive a large number of LEDs instead of just like one pin uh, having to s switch a lot of current, it's using the five channels to switch two LEDs in each channel. It doesn't strobe them backwards and forwards around that. It just brings them all on at once. And the advantage of that is that the little transistors inside have a certain resistance. So if you did try using one channel to light them all, it would limit the amount of uh, intensity you could get from the light. And the intensity, you know, it, I measured it. At low, it was 50 milliamps for the uh, current. High was 150 milliamps. 
and flash is a sort of 50-50 ratio at the full power, so it was about 75 milliamps. The intensity is pretty good. I can't give you exact lumen figures, but um, the it's not doing what some of the other camping lights do and just try and ram as much current through the LEDs as possible. It's being sensible, so all those LEDs will last a good length of time, and uh, it also means the, ba the battery's going to last a good time once it's fully charged or partially charged. There's a 5.6 ohm resistor as the main, I guess, to limit dissipation from the uh, transistors a, a bit further in there. Um, maybe they use that to fine-tune the intensities. And that's more or less it. So it's a shame that it's not got protection for the lithium cell, and it's not accessible. You can't open it up to easily change the lithium cell without slitting it all open. Because otherwise you could have got a standard Nokia battery and you could have soldered onto the connections on it uh, with the built-in protection and that would have made this a fully protected uh, unit. So instead, uh, it's a nice little solar panel. It's probably adaptable for other things. You could add protection in, but as it stands, it's a nice product marred by that slight uh, issue of the, uh, the lack of protection. Another thing about this is it's completely sealed. Water cannot get into that. That's quite good because it is sealed inside that plastic. And of the two, the uh, other one, was that round? Yes, it was the round one that had the clear plastic. I think the one that makes most sense is this one with the uh, diffused plastic because it will act as effectively an inflatable diffused globe that will spread the light over a wider area to the side. So um, it's an interesting product idea, just marred by that little thing regarding the lack of protection for the lithium cell.